Um, you know, America's always had a cozy relationship with genocide. Uh, when we're not participating in one or gleefully cheering one on, we're uh, sitting on the sidelines pretending it didn't happen, you know? Where, uh, 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 or, uh, we're rewriting the history of it, you know? We're re, we're recasting ourselves as the heroes sometimes. We do that, or, or we just, uh, try to erase it. Um, or sometimes we both sides it. Like, I would hear for years in the Civil War, they would make it out to be, like, two sides who had just differing political philosophies, you know? But uh, uh, that's what's been going on lately, I've noticed, with uh, Native American uh, genocide. I've been hearing people try to both sides it. And I don't know wh where this trend comes from, but uh, um, this is Ethan Klein talking about Native American genocide. Let's say the Native Americans, they come to your neighborhood and they just start burning people alive, killing people, kidnapping kids, desecrating bodies. And the first take is, you know, I support the Native American uh, revenge. I support Native American... Resistance. Resistance. That's the word you're looking for. Yes, I support Native American resistance. I do. I support Native American resistance fully, or I would have if I were alive when this was happening, as he's using his stupid hypothetical. So, so uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Um... Uh, Custer's Last Stand, or the Battle of Little Bighorn. We all hear about this, but uh, uh, what that was really about was uh, land. Um, the Sioux were uh, hanging out, living there, and uh, doing their thing, and then all these settlers just come in and start taking their land, and the government uh, steps in and goes, hey, 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 let's let not fight over this. All right, let's all try to get along, and they... Uh, they uh, negotiate a treaty let's let these guys have a little piece of land and then the natives are like okay but then sitting bull when he negotiates with them he just says listen i'm telling you right now the black hills are a holy hunting ground this is a religious thing to my people you are not allowed to have that that is ours end of story period you've got the whole world we have this little section this belongs to us you can't have it and they said well we don't want it and he goes, deal. Then the settlers would take even more land and more land. Then they would go back and they would negotiate and Sitting Bull would say, listen, these are the Dakota Hills. Same thing. And each time, the American government would be like, that's cool. What do I care? Then they found out there was gold in there. And then non-negotiable suddenly became negotiable. But Sitting Bull kept saying, well, I told you like 200 times we've had this conversation, explained my position very clearly, non-negotiable means we don't negotiate. And so Custer came down with his little soldiers in their cute little uniforms, and they attacked a village of uh, what they thought was just women and children, and they thought they'd kill them all, but uh, turns out there were a bunch of Sioux warriors waiting for them, and they got slaughtered. And it's funny that he uses the word desecration because I heard this story about how, and I don't know if this is true or not, how afterwards there are a lot of dying and dead soldiers and there are a lot of angry widows on the uh, Sioux side. And so they were allowed to, without going into details, mess with the bodies. So later on, of course, the American government got its revenge. I would put revenge in quotes because you're not allowed to have revenge when you started it. But they attacked the uh, Wounded Knee. They attacked Wounded Knee Reservation. This was after the Sioux had mostly had been defeated. And they were all just sort of living on essentially a concentration camp. Um, and uh, But they started uh, dancing. And uh, much like the film Footloose, uh, the, uh, the American government had a rule against dancing. And uh, they refused to stop dancing. So they wiped out 250 people and assassinated Sitting Bull point blank. But I see Ethan's point. There are 
bad people on both sides. American uh, militia. I support Native Americans. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, of course, we. Su I, I support Native Americans too, but like, did you not just see that they killed 700 people? You know? Okay, um, first of all, you don't support Native Americans. If you did, I wouldn't be making this video. What you're doing is you're passing lip service because you don't have the balls and the commitment to actually take a position and stick, stick with it. You keep backtracking and pretending. I, hey, listen, I support the rights of Native Americans. I just don't think that um, they have the right to resist European uh, dominance. Because, of course, well, listen, let me put it this way. There's no 700 settlers killed. I looked around. I couldn't find it. I don't know what he's referring to. I'm, I'm guessing he pulled that number right out of his uh, booty hole. But um, I do know of the Dakotas in Minnesota. Uh, they killed about half that. 359 settlers were murdered. Um, now, there's a decades story behind that, leading up to that, and same situation, settlers come in, they take land, more and more land, treaties are made, they violate those treaties, come up with borders, they violate those borders, till eventually they are all, the entire Dakota tribe is on a 20 mile strip of land on the bank of a river somewhere in Minnesota. They're supposed to farm. They are not, they don't know how to farm. They're hunting, hunter and gatherer tribe. And all of their hunting ground has been taken by the settlers. So the government told them to farm. But they were like, oh, we don't know how to farm. And they go, oh, well, then I guess uh, we're better than you or something. And uh, they told them that they were starving. We, they were promised money for the land that they uh, were forced to give up. And uh, the uh, government told them to, literally told them to uh, eat their own dung. So eventually uh, some tribes tried to steal some eggs, killed some settlers who resisted. And um, that led to a war. Now, the majority of those people didn't even want a war, but a small influential minority did. So there was a war, and 358, 359 settlers were killed. Of course, the government had more power. Um... They were allowed to um, beat these uh, these uh, the Dakotas and then send the families to the concentration camps, where many of them died. And um, uh, of course, nobody in power stepped up to defend them because there was nothing to gain by defending these people. Um. Week and Monday morning quarterback. That's what uh, I'm sure Ethan is thinking. Your Monday morning quarterbacking. I know Bill Maher says that about uh, slavery. That when we judge slavery, we're Monday morning quarterbacking. He apparently has never heard of abolitionists or in fact the Civil War, but he's claiming that everybody owned slaves back then and you're just Monday morning quarterbacking. You would have owned slaves and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think so. I don't feel that way. I can imagine myself in a situation. I can imagine myself living back then. I would not be a settler. I'm not a farmer. Uh, I don't like hunting. Um, I don't. I have no interest in building houses out of logs. Uh, I would imagine if I were like an Irish immigrant living in New York, and maybe I'd be in one of those like gangs, like you know the Shirt Tails or the Punchy Squirrels. You know, I'd be reading a newspaper. And I would be reading about this story, and hopefully if I am, I would be fully informed of the situation. And I would be, uh, uh, I would not exactly be appalled. I would sort of mark it off to, 
karma if I read about the Dakotas killing these settlers. I probably would have been like, it's karma in that one set of circumstances, one situation led to another situation. I would not uh, be celebrating these kids that got killed because they got dragged in to this situation by their psychopathic racist parents. But, you know, those that did celebrate, I wouldn't really judge them because I would understand their anger at having witnessed a genocide and not being able to do anything about it. And knowing that their government is not only ignoring it, but they're using our tax dollars to fund this genocide against Native Americans. I would be, I would understand their anger when they cheered that on. Their fury at this, at this situation. I would probably be more offended by the sudden burst of concern as if this came, this attack by the Dakotas completely came out of the vacuum because those Europeans were, were, were simply allowed to starve the Dakotas, the Dakota tribe. That they were somehow entitled to behave in that manner. I would be disgusted by that sudden burst of concern. And I would assume that anyone who suddenly got emotional over that situation was in their heart of hearts hateful and racist. No matter what amount of lip service they paid. No, I don't think Ethan supports Native Americans. I don't. You know, um, somebody said I found it too. Oh, maybe I shouldn't read that. Did catch my attention though. And it wasn't about this. Um, I'm only saying that from what I saw, there are people on fucking Twitter, prominent lefties who are so callous. They feel nothing for these fucking settlers. Um, this is not a lefty thing. This is a mainstream thing. Go watch a movie with Dustin Hoffman called Little Big Man. Custer is portrayed as a bumbling oaf. Never heard of a, a club, a nightclub named after George Custer. Listen, we, 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 we all agree. This is mainstream. We all agree on this issue. This issue. You go to Minnesota, and there are tons of monuments to, to the Dakota people. The governor of Minnesota apologized to the Dakota people. He apologized to the killers of these 358, 359 settlers. This is mainstream. There are, there are, uh, uh, there are uh, tributes to in uh, there are tributes to, to Crazy Horse. To Sitting Bull, to the Battle of Big, Little Bighorn, to the warriors that died murdering George Custer in the process of murdering George Custer. This is mainstream. It is actually Ethan who is the fringe voice in this particular situation. They feel nothing for these fucking dumbest analogy possible. Shut the fuck up. What's dumber? Wait, this is an analogy? I wasn't aware of that. An analogy for what? 